It was one of the many ideas presented to the United States Air Force as a solution to improve the branch's stealthy airframes. Rather than adopting a traditional tail section with both vertical and horizontal control surfaces, the Manta planned to use thrust vector control, which involves regulating the flow of the engine's power to give the aircraft the aerobatic skills it would require in a high-end battle. So in today's video, we'll be going over the X-44 Manta, its history, and more. The U.S. Air Force tackled the Advanced Tactical Fighter Program in the 1980s to develop America's next frontline combat fighter. The Lockheed Martin YF-22 and the Northrop Grumman YF-23 were finally pitted against one another in a fly-off. The former won out, and the YF-22 entered service with the United States Air Force in December 2005, making it the world's first fifth-generation fighter platform. According to Air Force Magazine, Lockheed Martin may have built up to six distinct airframes identical to the F-22 Raptor that was given to the Air Force. Design. The X-44, like the F-22, on which it was based, would have been very stealthy, maybe even more so than its F-22 dad. According to renderings of the X-44 idea, it would have retained the F-22's air intake inlets, which are meant to disperse enemy radar rather than reflect it outwards. The X-44 was a tailless stealth bomber, similar to the re-owned B-2 stealth bomber. These tailless designs are intrinsically stealthier than tailed airframes. The X-44 would have had a very low radar signal if it didn't have a tail. Instead of employing traditional control surfaces to move in flight, the Manta used thrust vectoring, which allowed the twin engine's exhaust nozzles to direct exhaust in different directions. Thrust vectoring designs are not new, even if they are innovative. The thrust vectoring engine nozzles of one successful Russian design in service with the Indian Air Force, a derivative of the Sukhoi Su-30, provide extremely high mobility. In comparison to its predecessor, the improved Delta Wing design offered a few advantages. Delta Wings by design have a larger internal and exterior surface area than standard swept wings, allowing them to retain more fuel. A bigger volume of fuel would have been able to store inside the plane's wings using so-called wet wings, also known as integrated fuel tanks. Payload Capacity of the X-44 While the X-44's Manta small wedge form helped with stealth, it also had several substantial benefits over America's previous stealth fighters, such as cargo capacity and range. However, it remained unclear just what type of payload or range boost the X-44 Manta may have delivered over the F-22. Although it would have benefited from the greater internal payload room and the higher lift supplied by the bigger lifting body, that lift may be able to sustain additional weight while simultaneously improving fuel economy. However, as Holland pointed out, the Manta idea was being pursued as a pure technology-driven demonstration rather than a full-fledged fighter development program. The name, or more accurately, the abbreviation of the X-44 goes right to the point of the notion. Some features, such as a conventional tail section with vertical and horizontal control surfaces, have become standard fare for a capable tactical aircraft after decades of fast fighter development while the F-22 and, subsequently, the F-35 had somewhat different tails than a non-stealth fourth-generation fighter like the F-16, the X-44 Manta was intended to achieve the same agility without all those tail surfaces. In addition, the aircraft's radar return would be drastically decreased without the tail part, making it even more stealthy than America's extremely pro-efficient F-22. So, obviously, Lockheed Martin teamed up with NASA to discuss how to make this vision a reality. Making an acrobatic aircraft that could avoid utilizing its tail for maneuvering would require a heavy reliance on thrust vector controls to adjust the jet's flight direction. The F-15 Active, a modified F-15 Eagle that utilized front wing canards and push vectoring jet nozzles to generate a fighter that might outperform the legendary Eagle in almost every significant manner, had already had a lot of success with thrust vector controls on a high performance fighter. Thrust vector control, to put it simply, is the ability to aim or position the nozzle of a jet engine. The nozzle aiming at certain platforms, such as the F-22 Raptor, is done on a single plane. However, the nozzle on others, such as Russia's fourth generation Su-35, can move in 360 degrees, providing even more dramatic possibilities when it comes to fast changing directions. In a head-on collision, the F-22 Raptor's thrust vectoring allows the pilot to point the fighter's nose and armaments down at an opposing jet as it passes by, while still pushing in the same direction. 
While the F-22 uses thrust vector control in addition to a more traditional tail section, Lockheed Martin proposed using the F-22 design as a starting point for this new technology prototype that could prove just as capable as the fighter designs we've come to accept as standard in recent decades. The value of a high turnover rate. Many fighter tacticians have emphasized the critical need to be able to maintain a fast turn rate at high Gs over the past 15 years. The argument was that if opposing aircraft couldn't match or beat the continuous turn rate at high Gs, they would be able to kill them with guns or missiles. With the advancement of missiles that can engage in all directions and the evaluation of Israeli combat victories, tacticians are increasingly moving toward the pressing need for rapid high-G maneuvers to acquire a first-shot quick kill capability before the opponent can launch his missiles. This is something the F-16XL is capable of. According to Harry Hilliker, it can reach 5 Gs in 0.8 seconds and 9 Gs in a little longer time. That's half the time it takes the F-16A to fly and less than half the time it takes the F-4 to fly. The time it takes to reach 5 Gs is also half that of the F-16A. By gaining higher range, payload, agility, and survival, all of these seemingly miracles appear to defy the principles of aerodynamics. Instead, they are achieved by innovative design, extensive wind tunnel testing of forms, the use of sophisticated technology, and a lack of contractual restraints. A cranked aero wing is paired with a 56-inch longer fuselage in this innovative design. The cranked aero design keeps the benefits of delta wings for high-speed flying while eliminating all the drawbacks by having the rear part less swept than the forward segment. As a result, it preserves superb low-speed characteristics while minimizing the tailless delta's trim drag costs. The drag is minimized despite having a wing size more than twice that of a regular F-16. The skin friction drag increases as the wetted area increases, but the other elements of drag that are components of the setup shape and arrangement decrease, resulting in a clean airplane drag that is slightly lower during the level flight and 40% lower when explosives and missiles are added. And while the thrust to weight ratio is less than one due to the extra weight, the excess thrust is higher since the drag is lower and surplus thrust is what matters. At the time, the X-44 Manta wasn't the only F-22-based idea floating around the Pentagon. The F-22 is the world's first operational and maintenance stealth fighter, the first fighter to christen the new fifth generation of jets, and arguably the most powerful air supremacy aircraft ever to fly in service for any nation. So, understandably, the US would consider using it for other, more specialized roles. The Sea Raptor attempt would have deployed F-22s on America's fleet of supercarriers, offering an aircraft that could fly faster, farther, and carry more ordnance than the F-35Cs presently headed for Uncle Sam's flat tops, while the X-44 design aimed to cut off its tail and make the F-22 even sneakier. But if you're curious about its Western parallels, one that springs to mind is the Russian Hunter B. The Hunter B is another name for the Sukhoi S-70, Akhotnik B. It's being marked as the cutting-edge sixth-generation UCAV. The Sukhoi Design Bureau and Russian Aircraft Corporation, MIG, have collaborated on this drone, which has a powerful stealth feature and is being deployed for the Russian Air Force. By 2024, it is scheduled to be deployed into service. This drone has a wingspan of 20 meters and a max takeoff weight of 20 tons. Various intakes, exhaust, and antenna cover Hunter Top B's body. It has a forward-facing camera system under the middle portion of the forward fuselage. As a faithful wingman, it will very certainly be networked to fly in a semi-autonomous formation. The drone can perform deep, precise strikes behind enemy lines thanks to its amazing operational range and ability to fly equipped with more than two tons of powerful ground attack and air-to-air -air missiles. So, how do you feel about everything we've discussed in today's video? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section below.